Observe two armies facing off under a microscope. The green troops are the body's own epithelial cells that line and protect our organs, while the red invaders are breast cancer cells. Labeling these cells with different fluorescent colors reveals the unfolding of this confrontation in real time. In a healthy body, cells respect each other's boundaries. They stop moving when they collide into each other, which helps keep everything in our tissues in order. But cancer cells have broken rank. They keep advancing even when they touch other cells, which lets them spread into new territory. This image captures the moment when the red cancer cells breach the front line, pushing forward into the epithelial cell layer. By watching this interaction play out, we can learn more about the mutinous properties of cancer cells and look for ways to stop them in their tracks. No prizes on offer for identifying a brain. But in fact, what you're looking at are two brains rather than one. Each brain half belongs to a different patient. This video captures how the concentration of a special radioactive tracer changes over a 60-minute period after intravenous injection. The darker the area, the more tracer there is. Over time, the tracer binds to beta amyloid plaques. These are clumps of proteins that can build up in the brain. As the video progresses and the tracer settles, a subtle difference between the two brains begins to emerge. On the right side, you may notice darker regions in one patient's brain, especially in the outer layer known as the cerebral cortex, which handles functions including memory. These darker regions indicate a high density of beta amyloid plaques one of the hallmarks of Alzheimer's disease. What could be a psychedelic rendition of a stethoscope actually shows both halves of the tropical zebrafish brain. Thanks to the tiny size and natural transparency of baby zebrafish, we can see activity in the whole brain during behavior. Despite their simpler structure, their brains also share many similarities to ours. At the bottom of the image, colored beads represent distinct cell types in a region known as the inferior olive. Look closely and you can see that each cell sends a long wire that crisscrosses to the opposite side of the cerebellar cortex a brain region above, which is also involved in motor coordination. The clouds of green and purple, on the other hand, show areas of brain activity in response to movement. Green for leftward motion and purple for rightward. Look closer still and you can see that the cells and the tips of their wires mostly overlap with clouds of the same color. Images such as these show how the brain's function is directly linked to its structure and how its highways and byways define the flow of information from one area to another. What could pass for a multicolored mountain range actually illustrates how a simple breath test is being used to screen for cancer. Powerful chemical analysis techniques with fancy names such as gas chromatography or iron mobility spectrometry can be used to separate the breath's complex mixture into its individual molecular components. This image shows us the different types of components. The peaks and valleys tell us how much of each molecule is present. The taller the peak, the more there is of that molecule. The spectrum of colors from purple to red helps highlight these differences in concentration. 
using something as simple and non-invasive as a patient's breath. Clinicians and researchers are able to utilize this data to screen for early stage lung cancer. Shattered glass, lightning against a night sky, or perhaps the sprawling roots of a plant, or maybe a network of veins or the tributaries of a river delta. None of these. What we're looking at is a close-up of a single brain cell or neuron captured using a technique called confocal microscopy. The white circle is the cell body, the command center from which branches known as dendrites radiate. Dendrites function like the neuron's antennae. The more there are, the more messages it can receive from other cells. Dotted along the dendrites are tiny bumps akin to leaves on a branch which vary in size and shape and form crucial points of connection and communication with other neurons. Changes in the number or size of these bumps might be linked to the involuntary muscle contractions in dystonia, a disorder in which muscles contract uncontrollably. Studying these changes in the striatum, a brain area responsible for movement control in mice with dystonia, could help us to better understand and eventually treat this challenging condition. Imagine a mole not as a blemish, but as a window to a hidden world. The reed nevus, with its starburst pattern, reveals a universe contained within your skin. Deep brown hues radiate outward like the fiery birth of a star, each pointed extension a tendril reaching for the cosmos. The image illustrates the striking contrast between the mole's ominous appearance and its benign biological behavior. Things are not always what they seem. It also serves as an analogy to the starburst explosion seen in technology and AI. The first paragraph of this script was generated using an AI tool based only on a combination of words, including Reed Nevis and inspirational description. The image of the mole was taken from a real patient. This shows the increasingly seamless interaction between human and machine. What at first sight might appear as coral polyps on the ocean floor is in fact a microscopic view of liver tissue, in no less need of protection, not from the impact of climate change, but from the danger of dormant cancer cells. While bears and bats are the most well-known hibernators, cancer too can enter a state of dormancy. This image has been specially stained to uncover these quiescent cancer cells, shining a torch into their cave. The blue dots are the nuclei of healthy cells, and the white lines are tiny blood vessels that branch from larger ones, depicted by black circles. Marked in green are breast cancer cells that have journeyed to the liver and now wait in silent repose, neither growing nor spreading. There, they may slumber for many years before potentially reawakening to become new, life-threatening tumors. Understanding what stirs these cells and how we can effectively target them could prevent many cancers from seeing the light of day. You could be forgiven for thinking this is a Jackson Pollock rendition of the Northern Lights. Actually, what you're looking at are bone marrow cells from a patient with multiple myeloma, a type of blood cancer. Bone marrow is the soft tissue inside our bones where blood cells are made. And here's a twist. These cells were grown outside the patient's body. A sample was taken from the patient's bone marrow and grown for seven days in a 3D structure that closely mimics the natural environment of the body's tissues. This realistic setting helps us better understand how cancer behaves and interacts with surrounding cells. In this image, the blue dots represent the nuclei of all the cells. 
the green structures are supporting cells to create networks for other cells to grow. The red dots are cancer cells, and the grey ones are immune cells. Using this 3D model, researchers can test multiple drugs on the patient's own cancer cells to identify which treatments might work best for that individual, making it a valuable tool in the world of personalized medicine.